It is probably the reason that only two of the secret combination sets are named Gadiantons. Mormon's text shows us that Gadiantons of Helaman's day ushered in the destruction of the Nephite policy. After that terrible end came a marvelous beginning. The atoning Messiah came and altered the world. To appreciate this fundamental alteration, we must understand that the Book of Mormon conception of this Messiah, even though the Book of Mormon prophets clearly understood the difference between the mortal mission of the Messiah and the final mission of the Messiah at the end of the world, they primarily preached the mortal Messiah and the mission of the atonement. Nevertheless, we give the Book of Mormon prophets little credit if we therefore presume that they did not also understand the Messiah of the end times or the triumphant Messiah. Mormon certainly understands that, there are, that these two comings of the Messiah are the same person, but different times. The triumphant Messiah is he who will transform the world into a single political religious entity and who, who will usher in a complete and final peace. When the atoning Messiah came, even though his mission was immortality, he could not help but bring with him the influence of who he truly was. In different circumstances, he was the one who would usher in a permanent peace. However, the mortal mission and the timing were different, so there are similarities and there are differences. For Mormon, the difference is one of permanence. The Messiah who appeared at Bountiful brought peace, just as he will at the end of the world. However, since this first time was related to a mortal ministry, it was not a permanent peace. It was a peace that lasted for 200 years before it began to fade. Nevertheless, this peace was directly related, inexorably related, to the appearance and the person of the Messiah. His essence required that he bring peace, even though the particular mission did not allow that peace to be permanent. Mormon would have seen the arrival of the Savior and Bountiful as connected to the future arrival of that same Messiah in new circumstances. We may suppose that Mormon's naming of the Gadiantans in the two time periods tells us of his expectations of the parallels. Mormon is facing the decimation of his own people, yet he retains his optimism in the future. Mormon is saying that in the time of healing, the destruction of the Nephites by the Gadiantans was followed by the coming of the Messiah, a miracle that restored the Nephites. Mormon is expecting that after the destruction of his own people by the new Gadiantans, that the Messiah will come again and will similarly restore the Nephites. His record will be the guide for that restoration. His optimism lives in his text, even though its fulfillment is taking longer than he would have hoped.